Hi, this is Susan from Susan B Cards. I want to show you this card that I made using the Autumn Serenade 3D embossing folder from Spellbinders. You can see it's a beautiful leafy 3D image. And on it, I used the uh, solar paste from Ranger with archival ink rubbed onto the folder. I made a card similar to this a few weeks ago. And that's also on my YouTube channel. Um, and this one, I used an embossing folder of the month and then some dies in the center. And you can see that I, I did the same process with the um, solar paste and archival ink. Um, this folder is no longer available and a few people were a little bit sad about that. So I did want to use something that is available, which is this Autumn Serenade embossing folder that came out in October. Um, the one thing that I did do on this card that I didn't do on the previous card, and I'm not going to show in my um, example, is I did add some lunar paste in Prom Queen, just a little bit in a few areas. I just wanted to try something a little bit darker and see what the effect was. It is very pretty, um, but it's not as soft as the previous card. So today I'm going to make another front using just solar paste, but know that you can use lunar paste in the same way. They're just going to look a little bit darker, especially on this black card stock. So just to tell you again um, how I apply this paste to the paper. Uh, this is just a half a sheet of eight and a half by 11 black 110 pound cardstock. It's just regular that I have. Um, I think I bought it from Hobby Lobby and I just buy big packs of it, usually just to use as a base. But I found that with the solar paste, 110 pound seems to work pretty well. And uh, I don't have to buy expensive watercolor paper for it. So that makes me happy. So what I've been using is just this, this is an old one. It's an old Ranger um, blending sponge. And just put it right onto the tool. These are a little bit harder to find because most people are using the domed one now, but I did find some, and I'll link it if I can still find them, but I also did see some at Michael's recently, just in the um, uh, distress area where the inks are. They still have some of the, the foams when I was there. So I just put some on a paper with a palette knife, scooped it out, put it on the paper. I like doing it this way because um, just apply what you need and I don't waste too much. I have found that using a palette knife to apply it leaves streaks and an uneven amount. It's much easier using this flat foam even as opposed to a domed foam which left streaks and I had to put a lot more paste down than I needed. So I generally just start just applying it this way. And as it dries, it does look darker Now, when I use this, I just um, wipe it off with a paper towel, but at the end, you should just rinse it off just to get the paste off, and I think I didn't do that probably the last time. It's leaving a little bit of a mark where some of the um, paste is dried on to the sponge, but if you use water at the end, it makes everything back to normal you know it's water soluble so if you use water before it dries it makes life easier so i'm just going to go through and i'm just going to put all the colors in and i'll probably just speed that up because
Okay, I let my paper dry, and I think it's been about half an hour or so since I applied it. But don't forget, this is a thin coat. It really depends on how much paste you put on. I'm going to take this um, embossing folder from Spellbinders. It's from the new release, October. This is what I see as the top of the folder. So when you open it, the areas that are gonna end up being recessed are actually raised. And since I want the ink, this dark ink, to go into the recessed areas to make it stand out, this is where I put the ink. So as you can see on this folder, most of the background is now standing out. But the leaves, except for the veining on some of the leaves, um, will not have the black pushed into it. So again, the black is going into the background, the recessed area of the embossed paper. Um, it doesn't matter which of the archival ink colors you want to use. This one is uh, just jet black. This one is the Distress Black Soot. There is a little bit of a difference if you stamp with it, but I really don't see much of a difference when I use it for this kind of um, technique. So just whatever you have is gonna be fine. I, sometimes you use a smaller one and you get into more of the details. So I like to go a couple different ways just to get some decent coverage on the background. The larger, pad of course will cover a bigger area quicker and it doesn't have to be perfectly covered I found it's just to give a little bit of a highlight the paper is black anyway so I'm going to put this in as you can see the half sheet of paper fits the entire embossing folder and um, I'm going to end up cutting this down for my card because this is this would be a huge card I'm going to put this through my big shot right now and I'll come right back and show. So this is what it looks like. Now, there's not 100% black coverage, and that's fine. I, I don't like that. It's just so that it stands out just a bit. We're not doing that um, Joseph's coat technique here. We're just making some of it stand out a little bit more in the background. And I'm gonna cut this down and make a card. Um, you do have to clean the embossing folder with some rubbing alcohol and just on a paper towel I just wipe it and then I rinse it in the sink. So here's the panel that I just made and I'm going to just let this dry. I decided not to die cut it yet um, because I don't want to make exactly the same card. So I'll just show you what I did make for Instagram which is this card and you can see that I cut the panel down. This is a 5 by 7 card. And then I matted it in black. So I used this Thankful Sentiment, which is from the same collection called Serenade of Autumn. And these are the sentiments. They're different sentiments with the shadow die as well. And there's Thank, Birthday, For, Grateful, Thought, Thankful, You, Wishes, Best, happy. You could put them in any order you want to. I just use thankful and I put solar paste on another black piece of paper and die cut thankful from it and then I just stacked it on top of uh, two more die cuts in black so that it would just stand up a little bit above the, the um, card. The secondary statement is also spellbinders but it's glimmer from the glimmer collection and it says cherish the season. And it comes from this set, which is mini Christmas sentiment strips. And there's a lot of different sentiments and then a large die to cut out the sentiments. And then you just cut it down to whatever size your sentiment is that you pick. So I used Cherish the Season. But I'll link this below so that you can find it. Um, and just to show you, uh, originally I had use that black paper, just spread some more of the colors of the solar paste on there, and then I die cut these leaves. I was thinking about using them, but then I thought it was just a little bit too much to, and 
the embossing, the 3D embossing folder was just so beautiful on its own. I didn't feel like I needed that. So I might put these maybe just on a black card. You know, that would be pretty too with some other kind of sentiment. I could put a lot more leaves. You know, obviously just arranging them a little bit better than I'm doing here, but just to show you what you can do. And that's very pretty too. And these leaves are from the, um, which is what I thought that originally thought this name, the name of this folder was, and it's called Autumn Wonder. And it's a set of different leaves and pumpkins and squash mushrooms. I, this is a beautiful set and it is an add-on set to use with the envelope of wonder. But again, you could just use these on its own. They're, they're such great shapes. And that's it. I think that's all that I did besides mounting it on this black card, just cutting it slightly smaller than five by seven, just putting it on. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and make a comment if you have something to ask me or tell me. I really appreciate it. Um, also, I have the affiliate links linked below. And that, of course, is always appreciated. So thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. And I'll see you next time.